Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Card Combo Show with me, Chokabilly, where I look at weird and wonderful card combinations in the Final Fantasy TCG. Before I get started, I want to do a quick plug for my new show, Final Fantasy X Hard Mode, where I'm going to be playing as far as I can into Final Fantasy X with no Aeons, no Overdrives, Initial Equipment Only, and no Sphere Grid. Is it possible? I don't know. But uh, it's going to be fun, I think. Uh, so yeah, make sure to subscribe if that sounds like the sort of thing you're into, and make sure to hit the little notification bell. Okay, this week I'm going to be looking at Thalita from Opus 3, Kefka from Opus 4, Eshenthal, Eshenthal, and then I say, uh, from Opus 12, Auron from Opus 1, and Garnet from Opus 8. So, first and foremost, Delita. When Delita is chosen by an ability of a character your opponent controls, break that character. When Delita is chosen by a summon of your opponent, deal one point of damage to your opponent. He has a 5 CP 9k, so he's on curve. He was a very good card for the time. Nowadays, he isn't so much because there's a lot of ways of being able to kill something without targeting it with both summons and abilities. Uh, board wipes, for example. But he still poses a problem for your opponent if they don't have that answer to hand immediately. And a kind of a drawback to his first te line of text is also that you get a lot of abilities now where you will put the character into the break zone to break a forward. For example, Opus 12 Gilgamesh, you put him into the break zone, you choose Delita. Delita would try to break Gilgamesh if he's not there, and Delita obviously breaks himself as well. And that's another thing, is that Delita doesn't stop any of these abilities from happening. They have a drawback, but it doesn't ultimately stop it, which is fantastic. Um, but I still really like him, I think he is a fun card to play. So, Mist Dragon. If your opponent does cast something like Diablos, where they would try to break the leader and maybe reactivate their backups, you can cast Mist Dragon to make it so that their summon is cancelled, but they've still chosen the leader with the Diablos, so that means they still take a point of damage for choosing him. Or you've also got uh, choose one forward your opponent, uh, choose one forward you control, dull it, the damage it would receive is reduced to zero, so again, another way to be able to mitigate any damage he might take. So, Clady. Choose one job prince forward or job knight forward activated. So I like this card mostly due to the fact that people forget about it. Uh, people often look at your backup lineup or are too focused on your forwards that they'll recognize it's there. And um, if they do see it, they think it's like a generic card that so won't really have any uh, consequential ability. But ultimately, your opponent may attack with something. You can then use Clady to reactivate the leader, and then they think, oh, I'm going to have to deal something, I have to either attack it with a uh, ability or a summon at which point they'll either break the character or they'll take point of damage, which if they're on six damage, you know, they can't do that. Tama, so obviously when Delita does kick the bucket, you can play Tama for seven to bring Delita back onto the field. And then you can also use Tama's dull ability to bring him back for a third time as well. And he can be quite a problematic character for a lot of decks to play against because some often rely on just outright breaking through abilities and summons. And if they're taking points of damage for that, or if they are uh, having to sack off all their characters for it, then it can really be a problem for them. So using like Summer to come, uh, continually bring him back will be very useful. IMO. So being able to use IMO to change the target of a, an ability. So say for example, your opponent's managed to play Forza onto the field and Forza chooses Delita, or doesn't choose Delita, sorry. You can make it so that IMO changes the target to Delita Delita has then been chosen by your opponent's ability, which then break Forza. Now, obviously, the 9k for Forza's entry ability would still hit Delita, so you do need to be careful of that. You need to be able to make it so that Delita can survive. Obviously, if not, then you've just killed Delita as well at the same time. But if it gets rid of Forza and ultimately that's the thing you want to do, then, you know, it works. Ramza. So he's a 5 CP 7k uh, with an EX burst. When Rams enters the field, choose one category FFT character other than card name Rams in your break zone. Add it to your hand. And at 5 damage, when Rams enters the field, you may play one category FFT character from your hand onto the field. So ultimately, if you play Rams at 5 damage, you can grab the leader out of the break zone and play him onto the field immediately, uh, which is really useful, just like at Tama before. But you know, it doesn't have to grab the leader. It could grab something like Agrias and then play the leader from hand anyway. It doesn't have to, the two don't have to be linked at all. But it's another way to be able to bring him back onto the field and cause your uh, part, your opponent a lot of issues. And if you are running an FFT themed knight deck, then you might have Ovalia, which means that both these guys would gain a buff as well. Okay, Kefka, a 5 CP 8k forward. With the EX burst, when Kefka enters the field, search for one monster, add it to your hand. Dull until the end of the turn, all the monsters you control also become forwards of 7,000 power. 
for electric jellyfish. Say you're on your opponent's attack phase, they attack with something, you could maybe block with Kefka, but you can also dull Kefka to make electric jellyfish a forward. You can block with him and then put him into the break zone to dull out another of your opponent's forwards. Uh, because when Kefka makes a monster a forward, they do not lose their abilities or their text, which is very useful. Death Machine. So, Death Machine's end text at the end of your opponent's turn. Select for one forward you control, put it into the break zone. So, you can use Kefka at the end of your opponent's turn to make Death Machine a forward. And then Death Machine can effectively kill itself with its own abilities. So, say you've got a few forwards down, you don't want any of them to die. Uh, you can just use that with Death Machine and you manage to save it. Obviously, you may have some forwards you want to let die, at which point you don't have to do it. But it's just a nice way to be able to get out of Death Machine's uh, kind of drawback. Manasvin Warmek. Uh, so again, maybe on the block, your opponent attacks with something. You can dull Kefka, make Manasvin a forward, block with him, and then use its own dull ability on itself. So choose one character if it deals damage to a forward this turn. Increase the damage by 2,000 instead. So it will then be a 7k that will deal 9k to something, which means it should be able to block most things and kill it. Killer B. Uh, so put Killer B into the break zone, choose up to three characters, activate them. That's the bit I'm really focusing on here. So it means that you can just play Killer B onto the field and you don't have to worry about any additional counters on it. Um, but ultimately, on the attack, you could maybe attack with Killer B. Well, sorry, you use Kefka to make it a forward, attack with Killer B, then maybe attack with something else. You could then put Killer B into the break zone because, as I said earlier, it keeps its text. That would reactivate the other forward and Kefka, and Kefka can then attack as well. So, Famfrit. You could use Kefka to make a monster a forward. You then cast Famfrit, and then you are effectively sacking off a monster in place of a forward, and your opponent still has to get rid of one of their forwards. It's a nice little combo, and monsters generally tend to be cheaper than forwards, so it means that you're still gaining a bit of value from casting the Famfrit, especially if the backup unit are down as well, where Famfrit costs you a little bit less. Malboro. So, you pay one water until the end of the turn. Malboro also becomes a forward with 6,000 power. And when Malboro blocks or is blocked, all the forwards your opponent controls lose 2,000 power until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability once per turn. So, you can use Malboro's ability to make him become a 6,000 power forward and its additional text. You can then, after that, use Kefka to make him a 7k forward. But it will still remain, or still retain, sorry, its uh, text from the previous ability. So it'll be a 7k forward, which will reduce the power of your opponent's forwards by 2 when blocking or blocked. Which is very useful, because that means it can effectively block a 9k, and he would still die, but it would also kill the 9k. Very old. When very old is put from the field into the break zone, choose one win monster, of course, four or less in your break zone, play it onto the field. Pretty sure everyone knows what color card I'm going to pair this with, but still. Um, also, the longer very old, well, the longer the game goes on, the better very old gets because the more monsters it can bring onto the field. But yeah, death gaze. Ultimately, you put very old into the break zone, death gaze comes into the field, and this can happen on your opponent's turn if you're blocked with very old. Death gaze comes in and then removes a forward of your choosing from your opponent's field. And yeah, as long as Death Gaze is there, that forward is removed. You can then use Kefka to make Death Gaze a forward and block with it as well. Now, obviously, you may not want to do that because once Death Gaze dies, the forward that he removed from the game then comes back onto the field. Now, you can kind of work this to your advantage, however. So let's say, hypothetically, your opponent plays the forward again that Death Gaze has removed. You can then say make death gaze a forward cast fam frit you put death gaze into the break zone your opponent puts a different forward into the break zone death gaze would then bring in the forward that your opponent already has on the field and the two would see each other and they'd get moved into the break zone which you know, maybe it wouldn't work the best for fam frit because they'd probably put that forward into the break zone but you see where i'm going with this you have a means of making it so death gaze dies brings in a forward that would then bring your opponent would have two of that same forward which is illegal and they would get put into the break zone even if they have text like they cannot be broken they would uh, still get put into the break zone because it is a rule process. Okay, Eshental. Dull put Eshental to its owner's hand. Play one forward, of course, seven or less other than card Eshental from your hand onto the field. You can only use this ability during your turn. So she is on curve. She's a 4 CP AK, which is decent enough. She's also 11 forward, which means she is searchable through the fabled Star Sybil. So Cloud of Darkness, you can return Eshental back to your hand to play Cloud of Darkness on the field, which is a useful board wipe ability. What's also good is that Eshental is kind of saving herself from Cloud of Darkness's ability as well, 
uh, leaves your opponent and yourself with only one forward and you can then replay Eschenthal if you so choose. But ultimately in ice, uh, you may struggle if your opponent starts uh, building a huge field, they start walling you out and there aren't, as far as I can think of, too many board wipe effects. You've got things like Zalera, but they have a prerequisite of your opponent having the dull forwards. So using Eschenthal's ability to play a forward of any colour can be quite useful and getting a board wipe through Cloud of Darkness may just do it. Vice. So when Vice enters the field, you may play one Ice Forward or cost three or lesser from your hand onto the field. So you put Eschenthal back into your hand to bring in Vice. Vice can then bring in Shelk. Shelk then bring in a forward of two or less that isn't Ice. And if you do so, your opponent then discards a card. So you put Eschenthal back into your hand to play three forwards onto the field and you make your opponent discard, uh, discard? <laughs> discard a card, sorry. Um, and that could be something, you know, there's a lot of smaller forwards now which are really, really useful. Um, Opus 12 Shadow Lord, for example, obviously your opponent may get to play a backup off of it, but depending on how late in the game you are, you might be able to play that card quite safely. Either way, the fact that you can just, for dulling a four cost forward and returning it to your hand, which means that she's kind of recurring some of her own costs as well, uh, you are getting to play three forwards, which are, you know, of reasonable size. I think that's pretty good. Cecil. So obviously you want to be careful with this card because if possible Cecil must block. Um, but say um, on your turn your opponent is trying to interject and the, uh, maybe they're on fire and they're trying to cast something like a Phoenix or just an Ifrit. You can use Eschental to bring Cecil onto the field and all the forwards other than Cecil you control gain plus a thousand power and if they're dealt damage by summon or ability the damage becomes zero instead. Obviously, you need to be careful of things like Kuchaspel because they can stop damage from being reduced. And technically, Cecil's uh, text should read, the damage is reduced to zero instead. But uh, yeah, be careful of that. But either way, it's a nice tech play to be able to stop your opponent from dealing damage to your forwards. Dark Fina. Again, she works well with Eschental because she isn't restricted on the cards she can play. So you play Dark Fina onto the field and you can choose to either search for one summon and add it to your hand or cast one summon that costs seven or less from your hand without paying the cost. If you're at five damage, you can do both, which is great because, you know, putting Eschental back into your hand to then play Dark Fina to search yourself something like seven cost Phoenix to then play that Phoenix and grab a forward out of your break zone. To then play that onto the field as well is fantastic. Again, you get Eschenthal back to your hand and Fina can find you a summon and play a summon of any color, which is really, really useful. Scylla. So I shouldn't understate the value of having just an outright break in ice. They are very, very useful. An outright break in any element is really good, but ice needs more. Often its outright breaks are very limited to like how many cards your opponent has or forwards of a certain cost can only be broken. So Scylla being able to just break a dull forward is useful. Not only that, it also gets your opponent to discard a card as well, and it's a reasonable size forward as well. So being able to just pay or for Eschenthal's ability or her own cost and then putting her back into your break zone to play Scylla, she is slow, yes, but if it breaks something and gets your opponent to discard a card and you still get to keep a forward, I think that's pretty decent. Realm, so Eschenthal back to your hand to bring in Realm. Realm then searches two monsters and brings them onto the field. Things like Flan or Buckaboo can really, really be horrible for your opponent, but she can search things off color as well. So something like Unsangamashi. So you may only have those in there to be searchable off of Realm. They may be off color, but again, Realm can find them and play them onto the field without needing those elements. And Strago, this is a funny little play. So you use Eschenthal to play Strago onto the field. When Strago enters the field, choose one forward your opponent controls, return it to its owner's hand. Then you may play one character of the same cost as it from your hand onto the field. So let's say Strago bounces a four cost forward. You could then play Eschenthal back onto the field. So effectively, all you've done is play Strago for free and bounce one of your opponent's forwards, which is pretty cool. Regis. Now this is where the jank begins. So. Let's say you're in your attack phase. You've attacked with a couple of forwards and unfortunately they've died for whatever reason. You then have Eschenthal use her ability to play Regis from your hand onto the field because as long as you swing a turn, you can use Eschenthal's ability. It doesn't matter when, so it can happen in the attack phase. You bring Regis onto the field, which then brings back those forwards that did attack. If they have haste, they can then attack again. Or if you have the means of giving them haste through, say, just the little red mage backup or something, it doesn't matter, so long as you can give them haste. Maybe one of the cards you're bringing back is Iliwa. You can then use Iliwa's S to give them all haste and also uh, reduce your forwards. 
uh, your opponent's forward's power as well, which is super useful. Oren. So as the game goes on, there are more and more abilities and summons which will be able to break your opponent's, uh, break your own backups. And again, the longer the game goes on, the better the backups become. So things like Une, for example. Uh, Eshental. Be able to use Eshental to play Oren onto the field. So let's say you're in ice and you do have Une there, which can be a big pain for your opponent. If your opponent has the means of breaking your backups, they probably will take it. And you know, there's things like the Fenrir summon, uh, Mandragora, all these nice cheap ways of being able to break your backups. So let's say your opponent does cast Fenrir to break backup. No, sorry. Let's say they cast, uh, just use the Mandragora to try and break your backup. You can then on the fly Eshental to bring an Oren you can then protect all your backups but obviously then the focus of attention becomes Oren and they need to try and break him to then try and break your backups. So Mist Dragon. Mist Dragon can be used to cancel summons so like I said earlier use Diablo to stop Oren from dying or it can just reduce the damage that Oren would take as well. So again your opponent wants to try and break your backups which means they have to try and break Oren so you then need to start protecting your Oren through the likes of Mist Dragon and Titan as well. It shouldn't be understated that choose one forward you control Dullet it cannot be broken so stopping your forward from being broken is very very useful. Be wary though if his power is reduced to zero, so through the likes of uh, Cloud of Darkness or um, Yuna, he will become zero power and is then placed into the break zone, which again is different to being broken. Amaterasu, so obviously maybe they're not going to go for the outright break or dealing damage to Auron, they're just going to go for a board sweep, something like Shantoto for example, or the Opus 1 Cloud of Darkness. You cast Amaterasu and that will stop it from happening, which again is more protection. Really, all these forms of protection work for any card, but the likes of Oren stopping your backups being broken may be essential in your deck, so keeping him protected is very uh, a big focus. Kimari. Uh, it's fitting, isn't it? Um, but Kimari's cost goes down for every Guardian you control, and Oren himself is a Guardian, so he would make Kamari only cost 5, I say only, still a lot, but Kamari will make it so that Oren cannot be targeted by summons or abilities, which is very useful. Mira, so more funny jank. Dull, choose one category FFCC character other than forward you control, activated until the end of the turn, it also becomes a forward with 8000 power, so you can have a backup that becomes a forward, that is still covered by Auron's ability because backups you control cannot be broken by your opponent's summons or abilities, that's really really useful. Um, so normally in the game when the word becomes is used, it overwrites that card's previous abilities. So for example, there is the light Sarah backup. She becomes an element of your choosing, but then she's no longer a light backup. In this case, it also becomes. So if you were, say, to make Tom Betty a forward, Tom Betty will be a backup and a forward. So anything that can target either one of those two things can target Tom Betty. And Auron obviously protects them from outright breaks with summons or abilities. Garnet. She's a fantastic little card. Very, very useful. The fact she has an EX burst to be able to activate a forward is great. She's got a decent power for her abilities. Given the fact she has two abilities and she can still survive a lot of damage is useful. But um, if a forward you control is dealt by a summon, reduce her damage by 5,000 instead. So she works fantastically with the Final Fantasy IX summon, Medine. Uh, you can only cast Medine during your turn, and if you have received 5 points of damage or more, the cost required to cast Medine is reduced by 2. Deal 9,000 damage to all the forwards. All the forwards obviously entails your forwards as well, but with Garnet down, it means that that damage is reduced by 5,000, which means that you cast Medine, even Garnet can survive because she'll only receive 4,000 damage. What's ironic about this is that in Final Fantasy IX, Garnet and Ico, the two summoner characters, can only... Uh, summon certain pools of summons and Medine was only available to Ico. It was quite ironic that in the FFTCG uh, Medine works so well with Garnet who could never summon it. Minwu, so obviously uh, stopping summons from dealing damage and then making that damage be reduced to zero is very useful. Again, be very careful of the likes of Kuchaspel, but there are ways around Kuchaspel as well, even if your opponent does have it using the likes of Green Mage. As I said earlier with Clay AD, having these backups down that don't get much play can work to your advantage because your opponent may not focus too much on your backup or they may look at it and mistake it for something else or they just see it and see it it's a generic card and think, 
oh, it's it's fine, it doesn't have any consequential ability, but actually they use Kuchaspel. You then use Green Mage to stop that ability from happening. You can do the same with Leviathan as well. Just cancel action ability, so your opponent goes to use Kuchaspel to try and cast a big summon to deal damage to your forwards. Use Leviathan. I mean, Leviathan can actually reduce the damage summons deal to zero anyway, but if, they, if they've used Kuchaspel, it's kind of null and void. So you want to use choose one action ability, cancel this effect. Doga. Dull. Put Doga into the break zone. Choose one character you control. During this turn, it cannot be broken by opposing summons or abilities that don't deal damage. So basically, your forwards have to be dealt damage to die. So then your opponent has got to try and either use a summon, which they will either be hitting way above the damage limit because of Garnet, because you'll be reducing the damage by 5k, which then means they have to kind of rely on using uh, abilities to deal damage. Now, there are the likes of Braska's final Aeon and plenty of other cards. Um, I said him earlier, Forza, Forza, uh, for example, as well. There are lots of different ways of a, a character's dealing damage to your forwards, but making it so that your forwards can only be broken by damaging abilities or summons, and even the summons probably won't work, can be a bit of a curveball for your opponent, and they may have to start rethinking how they're going to play their deck. Rosa, Rosa reduces the damage dealt to your forwards by a thousand, and. Garnet obviously reduces the damage you take from summons, so it means that if your opponent casts a summon, say 7 cost Phoenix, you would actually only take deals 8k, so you'd only take 2k damage from that summon alone, and then obviously they bring a forward him, and if that was something, say like Forza, that damage would, uh, would also be reduced as well. So these two be able to mitigate the damage dealt. So playing something like Minwoo obviously would then mean that a lot of damage mitigation would work in your favor and your opponent's gonna have to start rethinking how they would deal damage to your forwards or just have to rely on outright breaking. Cool, there we are folks. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the little notification bell. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be doing that weird Final Fantasy X challenge, which is gonna be nightmarish, but it'll be fun. Come join me, won't you? See you in the next video.